In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between acute angles, right angles, obtuse angles, and straight angles. And we're also going to go over some common uh, geometry problems associated with right angles and things like that. So what exactly is an acute angle? So first, let's start with a picture. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So let's say x represents the angle. So x is going to be less than 90 degrees. Now the next angle that we need to talk about is the right angle. A right angle has an angle of 90 degrees. Typically you'll see a box right next to the vertex. So x is exactly 90. The next angle you need to be familiar with is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is a relatively large angle. The angle is greater than 90, but less than 180. So that is an obtuse angle. And finally, a straight angle. A straight angle is basically the angle of a straight line. And a straight line always has a measure of 180 degrees. So that's a straight angle. A full circle is always 360 degrees. But half a circle is 180. So notice that if you draw a straight line, the angle that forms is basically in the shape of a semicircle. That's 180. So here is a simple matching quiz. Feel free to pause the video and classify each angle as a right angle, acute angle, straight angle, or an obtuse angle. Now this is pretty much an easy quiz, so feel free to do it if you want to. So let's start with number one. So if we have an angle of 180 degrees, which answer choice does that correspond to? Is that a right angle? Is it acute? Is it a straight angle or an obtuse angle? If it's exactly 180, then it is a straight angle. So therefore, number one is answer choice C. Number two, an angle of 70 degrees corresponds to which answer? Number two represents answer choice B. An acute angle is any angle that is less than 90. So if it's 50, 70, 45, those are all less than 90. So number two represents an acute angle. Number three is exactly 90, which is a right angle. So number three is answer choice A. And finally, number four by default has to be the obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is between 90 and 180. It's greater than 90, so 90.1 would be an, uh, an obtuse angle, but it's less than 180. So 179 is an obtuse angle, and therefore 115 is also obtuse. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's say that angle ABC is a right angle. Now let's say it's divided into two angles, not divided evenly. Let's call this angle 1 and angle 2. So angle 1 is the same as angle ABD. Angle 2 is equivalent to angle DBC. Now let's say that angle 1 has a measure of 5x plus 4 and angle 2 is equal to 7x minus 10. And keep in mind, angle ABC is a right angle, which means that it's equal to 90 degrees. Find the measure of angle 1. So feel free to pause the video. Now before we do this problem, I want to give you some examples. So I'm going to draw angle ABC again. Now let's say if angle 1 is equal to 40 degrees. What is the value of angle 2? Now keep in mind, ABC is the right angle. 
which means that it has to add up to 90. So therefore, the value of angle 2 is 50. So these two angles, they have to equal 90. 40 plus 50 is 90. So now let's finish this problem. So we know that angle 1 plus angle 2 has to equal 90. Whenever two angles add up to 90, it's said that those angles are complementary angles. Supplementary angles add up to 180. Now, we can replace angle 1 with 5x plus 4 because those two are equal to each other. And angle 2 is 7x minus 10. So if we could find the value of x, we could find the measure of angle 1. Once we have the value of x, all we need to do is plug it in to 5x plus 4, and that's going to give us the measure of angle 1. So let's simplify the equation on the left side. Let's combine like terms. 5x plus 7x is 12x, and 4 minus 10 is negative 6. So 12x minus 6 is equal to 90. So now what we're going to do is add 6 to both sides. So on the left side, all we're going to have left over is 12x. On the right side, 90 plus 6, which is 96. So now what we need to do is divide both sides by 12. 12 goes into 96 8 times. So x is equal to 8. So now that we have the value of x, we could find the measure of angle 1. So let's replace angle 1, I mean x, with 8. So angle 1 is going to be 5 times 8 plus 4. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 plus 4 is 44. So the measure of angle 1 is 44 degrees. Now, if we want to find the measure of angle 2, it's 90 minus 44. So it's 46 degrees. But the answer that we're looking for in this problem is the measure of angle 1, which is 44. Now here's another example. So let's say this is A, B, C. Let's say A, B, C is a straight line. Let's make this D and E. And let's say angle E, B, C is equal to 70 degrees. And angle D, B, E, let's say it's 60. What is the measure of angle A, B, D? Let's call it x. Find the value of x in this example. And remember, line ABC is a straight line, which means it forms a straight angle. Whenever you have a straight angle, the sum is 180 degrees. So that means these three angles have to add up to 180. So we can write an equation, x plus 60 plus 70. Now, 60 plus 70 is 130. And to find the value of x, we need to subtract both sides by 130. So 180 minus 130 is 50. So that's the value of x, which is the measure of angle ABD, or you can call it angle DBA. So here's another example. Let's say this is line ABC. And let's call angle DBC angle 2. And ABD is going to be called angle 1. Now let's say that angle 1 is equal to x squared plus 16. And angle 2 is 20x minus 25. And keep in mind, ABC is a straight line. What is the measure of angle 2? Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. Now, if ABC is a straight line, that means that angle 1 and angle 2 adds up to 180. Whenever you have two angles that add up to 180, 
they're known as supplementary angles. So let's write an equation. Angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180. Now angle 1 is x squared plus 16. Angle 2 is 20x minus 25. So now let's simplify the equation. 16 minus 25 is negative 9. Now notice that we have a quadratic equation, which means we need to take the 180, move it to the left side, and then to find the value of x, we can use the quadratic formula, or we could factor. So if we subtract both sides by 180, this is going to be x squared plus 20x minus 189, which is equal to 0. In order to factor this trinomial, we'll need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 189, but add to positive 20. So what are those two numbers? It turns out that 189, it's not divisible by 2, but it is divisible by 3. If you take in your calculator, if you type in 189 divided by 3, you're going to get 63. Now 63 is 7 times 9, which means 189 is divisible by 7. If you divide 189 by 7, you're going to get 27. And notice that 7 and 27 differ by 20. But 7 plus negative 27, that's negative 20, so we've got to reverse the sign. So what we want to use is negative 7 and positive 20. So therefore, to factor this expression, it's going to be x minus 7 times x plus 20. And so that's equal to 0. Now we need to set each factor equal to 0. Now if x minus 7 is equal to 0, that means x is positive 7. And if x plus 20 is equal to 0, that means x is negative 20. Now, we're not going to use this answer because if we plug in negative 20 into angle 2, we're going to get a negative angle, and that's not practical. So therefore, x is equal to 7. So now that we have the value of x, we could find a measure of angle 2. So angle 2 is equal to 20x minus 25. But let's replace x with 7. Now what's 20 times 7? 2 times 7 is 14. So 20 times 7 is 140. All you need to do is add the 0. And 140 minus 25 is 115. So this is the measure of angle 2. It's 115 degrees. Now let's go ahead and find the measure of angle 1. By the way, this is the answer for the whole problem. Now, angle 1 is x squared plus 16, so that's going to be 7 squared plus 16. 7 squared, that's 7 times 7, that's 49. And 49 plus 16 is 65. So that's the measure of angle 1. Now, to make sure that we have the right answer, we need to check to see if these two angles add up to 180. And 115 plus 65 if you type it in your calculator, it does add up to 180. So this is the right answer for the problem.